Oh, and medical students, always thank the patients afterwards. I mean, they're letting you do some pretty intimate things to them and you're a complete stranger, like they don't know you from a can of paint. And try not to stare into their souls when you're palpating their breasts, okay? It's weird. Just focus on their breasts. Look into their breasts, not into their eyes. I know you'll be tempted. I did this a few times, but luckily the patient was always, well, most of the time, they were always looking away. Hi everybody, welcome to Jan Smith Life and I'm back with another video on my surgical rotations. This video will be about my one week breast surgery rotation. So I was in clinic about half of the time and then I was in the theaters about the other half so I didn't get to see as many surgeries as I usually would have. This week I only saw 9 surgeries and I scrubbed into one of those. But I do have some clinic stories for you guys. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and first begin with a fun fact about UK rotations. So they don't believe in wearing white coats over here. As a matter of fact, they don't believe in wearing anything that falls below the elbows. So even if you do wear long sleeves, you have to roll them up. It's an infection control thing and it actually kind of makes sense in America. So the only time you'll see people in white coats is in the pathology unit. And I think they only wear the white coats in the pathology unit. I've never seen anybody walking around the hospital with a white coat on. Interesting, huh? What I did in the clinic. So every morning that week, I took a shuttle from the hospital that I'm currently at to another sister hospital. And we went to a clinic over there. It was honestly a little annoying because the shuttles were very sporadic and very spaced out. So if you missed a shuttle, you would have to wait hours or take a taxi or Uber back from the clinic to this hospital. And I actually had to do that twice because I got too carried away on feeling on Tata's. So at the clinic in total, I did about 20 breast exams and histories. So I went into the room first before the doctor did and a nurse followed me in there and I would ask a series of questions while I was doing the breast exams. I asked questions like, what brings you in today? How long have you had this pain? Does it only hurt around your period or when you're on your period? When was your last menstrual cycle? How long have you felt this lump for? Has it increased in size? Has it gotten more painful over time? When did you go through menopause? What color is the nipple discharge? Do you have a family history of breast cancer? So yeah, these were very focused questions. Side note, if a patient does have breast pain in one breast, you wanna palpate the non-tender breast first and then move on to the breast that hurts. Okay, so when I was done with the patient, I came out of the room and reported my findings to the doctor, and then he would go in after me and do his own um, physical and history. I actually felt like a real doctor during this time. It was a really nice feeling. I also got to spend some time with the radiologists and the interventional radiologists to see things like ultrasound guided breast biopsies. So this is when you use ultrasound to locate the tissue of interest and then you insert a needle into the breast tissue and you take a biopsy of that tissue. They also use the same method for aspirating abscesses or cysts that are located inside the breast tissue. They just stick a needle into the structure and they suck out the contents. It's actually really cool. I also saw a ton of mammograms, but honestly, once you've seen one or two, you've kind of seen them all. I've actually had one of these mammograms done before and it's not a fun thing to do but it actually kind of hurts. I mean, look at it. Look at what us women have to go through. Mammograms and childbirth. Yippee! Some interesting cases that I saw in clinic. I saw an older woman with a malignant breast cancer. Like, it was one of those cases where you wonder how did the patient let it get this bad? Let me show you an example. Now, if you're squeamish, I'm only gonna show this image for two seconds so you can look away or close your eyes. And if you want to look longer, just pause the video. All right, I'm about to show it right now. If you saw that image, this is at least a stage three cancer, maybe even a stage four, but we won't know for sure unless you run more tests. She was taking care of her husband who was really sick and he ended up passing away. She had so much focus on him that she wasn't taking care of herself. And for some reason, she also stated that in her house, they don't have mirrors that go below the chest area, I guess. I don't know. And she also claimed that she felt wetness, but it didn't hurt, so she didn't think it was anything to worry about. 
But when I saw her that day, her daughter brought her in. So maybe she finally showed her daughter. Side note, if you feel a painful breast lump, it's more than likely nothing to worry about. But if you feel a lump that is painless, that feels irregular or grows really fast, that's something to worry about. Another interesting case I saw was a woman with breast tissue in her armpit. Yes, you heard me correctly. So if you look at this picture, you'll see two lines that start in the armpits and go all the way down to around the groin area. So this is called the mammary ridge or the mammary crest or the milk line. And this develops around the seventh week of embryonic development, which actually happens before sexual differentiation. And this is why males have nipples. So after the initial development of the milk lines, they end up going into remission. And this is why most humans have two nipples. But, 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 sometimes someone can end up with extra nipples or extra breast tissue along this, these lines. It can be as inconspicuous as a tuft of hair, or it can develop into a full-blown milk producing mini breasts. And I say mini breasts because they will never actually be as big as your regular breasts. This condition is called polythelia, which means extra nipples, or polymastia, which means extra breast tissue. This condition is more common in Asians than in anyone else, um, especially Japanese. Here is an example of a man with polythelia. You can see that it barely looks like a nipple, but you can also see that it's on his milk lines. I mean, how cool is that? I've checked my body for some and I don't have any. If I did, I would actually show you guys. Um, but do you have any? Surgeries I scrubbed into. I only got to scrub into one surgery this week, but it was an amazing one. I scrubbed into a right breast reduction and left nipple reconstruction post mastectomy. So this woman previously had cancer, but got the cancer removed along with her nipple. So her breasts look similar to this. The surgeons had to recreate her nipple from nothing. It was so, so, so amazing to be a part of. Let me tell you how they did it. Here's a picture. So they draw this star shape on the breast and then they fold those edges in and suture the incisions. And once they're done with the surgery, they put a foam house that goes on top of the um, nipple, which is basically just some foam material that they have cut into a dome shape and they place it on the nipple and they keep that foam house on there for a few weeks until the nipple holds its shape. And this is actually a crucial step because if you don't put the foam house on there, the nipple will flatten. I mean, it is just skin after all. So now you know how to make a nipple. Oh yeah, and we also did our breast reduction on the right side because we needed to match the now smaller left breast, the one that she got the mastectomy on. Surgeries that I saw related to the breast. All right, so I saw a complete mastectomy of the left breast. I also saw a right mastectomy and a level three AMC. And what this really means is that along with the mastectomy, they also removed all three levels of her limp axillary lymph nodes. Surgeries I saw unrelated to breasts. So I saw a vaginal cyst removal. I saw two laparoscopic cholecystectomies. I saw a laparoscopic mesenteric cyst removal. I also saw an enucleation of a maxillary odontogenic cyst, which just basically means the removal of a cyst from the tooth. And lastly, I saw a lower uterine segment cesarean section, which is actually the second one I've seen so far now. Can I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? Nah. But don't get me wrong. Breast surgery is very cool. It's very rewarding and I really enjoyed it. And also the surgeries look pretty easy compared to the other surgeries that I've seen. But I've just never been interested in seeing breasts all day. I don't know. The cancer removal and the reconstructive part of it was really rewarding. But the cosmetic part of it, uh, I don't know. Because if a girl comes up to me saying, oh, I want, you know, double F implants, I'm going to be like, girl, you don't need that. And that's not really going to work out well for me now, is it? So that was my one week breast surgery rotation. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video, which will be on my two week orthopedic surgery rotations. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.